I thought that I would uh, try this afternoon to uh, explain why a professor, um, a, a Cambridge Don, would, uh, would make a rock music video um, for women in science. Um, it's not the first thing people expect to happen. Our approach was to uh, get these women in their laboratories and film full-length interviews of the girls describing uh, their stories. The band in the video, my band, Violet Transmissions, was filmed in this place, believe it or not. These are the old labs at Newnham College. This is where women were able to do their science before they were allowed to do science in university laboratories. So we, uh, we thought, yeah, we want to set up and play there. At the outset, when we said, OK, this professor is going to sing a song for women in science, people sort of went, why? It's worth taking a second to kind of explain, I, I guess, my motivation for doing this. Um, I, I think it starts uh, with this person, Lisa Succeda, who's m my wife. She is an excellent scientist. She's got two degrees in psychology and a degree in artificial intelligence and a PhD in robotics. And I've known her since before her PhD program, in which there were more Daves than women. So I've been, I've been aware <laughs> aware indirectly, but aware of the problems that can be faced by a woman in science from, from uh, very early on. Lisa and I now run a lab together in Cambridge. The lab is always full of excellent woman scientists. At Pembroke College, I direct studies. And the majority of the students in biology who I direct studies for uh, are women. And of, of course, um, they're excellent. I see this, and then I go to some, some fancy committee somewhere, starting up an international uh, center in neuroscience is something that I did recently. And I look around the table, and the majority, and sometimes all of the faces, are men. So there's a disconnect between what I'm seeing in my personal experience and what is happening at later stages in scientific uh, careers. Now, what can I do about it? I mean, I don't think that I'm in a position to stand up in, in a place like this, uh, even, and, and pontificate about what it's like to be a woman in science. I don't know what it's like to experience those problems, and I have no expertise in, in how we should solve the problems. But people like Science Girl do. This is what they do. They live this. What's more, for this project, I mean, they're young and energetic, and they have an awesome logo. And so it was a very good match. And so we got together. Although one in five boys consider a career in STEM, the figure for girls is fewer than one in 20. Even though boys and girls are performing indistinguishably on tests of scientific ability. So why is that? Somehow, these girls are answering no to these questions. Science is not for me. Where, is the, where are they getting the idea that science is not for them? And the science girls identify a number of sources, the home, the workplace, the classroom, and so forth. And they propose solutions in a number of different areas, uh, 11 to be exact. Solutions and recommendations for how we can break down the stereotypes, and that's what we're talking about, gender stereotypes. They are also careful to name the people in science who they think should be responsible for making those changes. Often, not always, but often, it is a government, some government department that can do something, and someone in government at least once listened. So here is an MP during Prime Minister's questions, holding the science girl's document and waving at the Prime Minister, saying, what are you going to do about this? I think that you can break through, and I think that we can uh, make changes. I guess if there's um, a message uh, in this talk, it's that if you are in a position 
to make a change directly, and that means if you're a boss or a teacher or a parent or a, a colleague or a mentor, then do it. Thanks very much uh, for listening.